Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Impius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelop and IDF product management team. In this session, we talk about service integration in Oracle IDF and we talk about the integration of RESTful services. Now, the reason you want to integrate services within Oracle IDF may be because you're in an IT environment that is fully based on a SOA architecture or that some of the functionality that you get are from a third party application or that the functionality is maybe from an ADF application, but that is not owned by you. So some people try to protect their data for a reason by exposing a defined API for you to work with. This way, they would ensure that whatever you do with their API always runs through the validation that they require for the data to have. So one of the options would be to expose this kind of data as SOAP service, but the other one is the RESTful service, and RESTful services have gained momentum recently. So it's good to look into how can ADF applications consume RESTful services. While this is not a training on RESTful services, just for the sake of completeness, let's have a quick look at what RESTful services are. Well, the REST stands for Representational State Transfer. And what that means basically is that obviously this service or this type of service is different from a SOAP service, and in fact it is. On SOAP, you expose methods to invoke, to query data, to update data. REST just represents a resource. A resource can be a department or an employee. And then, based on the representation, you can drill down into it. A department might have employees, and an employee might have other employees reporting to this employee. And this is fairly dynamic. RESTful services are based on HTTP methods. Similar to how the internet works, you send an HTTP request, typing in a URL to a remote server, and you receive content to work with. If you want to update the content, you typically use a POST method to post form data to the remote service, and so on. RESTful services works exactly the same. It uses the HTTP methods POST, PUT, DELETE, and GET to run the full CRUD operation cycle. And because it's a representation of the resource, the resource itself never gets downloaded to the client. The representation can be dynamically agreed upon between the client and the server, so it can be negotiated, and could be XML or JSON, which is a JavaScript object notation, image, or even text. Depends on what the server supports and what the client expects. Most commonly used is JSON for RESTful services because JSON comes with less overhead compared to an XML payload. However, it's flexible and it's all dependent on what the service is providing and what the resource is that you need to represent on the client. The standard behind this in Java E6 is JuxRS. It's an XML API for RESTful services. In releases before Java E6, like in Java E5, which we use with JDevelop 11G, JuxRS is not available. However, the Jersey libraries, which make the reference implementation of the standard, are available for download. So you can download this from the Jersey website, configure it with your project, and then you can work with RESTful services, though less integrated than in 12C, where we do have Java 6 support. But it's possible and you can do it. As mentioned, 12C, JDWP 12C, provides RESTful service support. So we come with a bundling of the JavaScript libraries. We also provide uh, RESTful service data control and we do provide a wizard that easily allows to expose Java objects, POJOs or Enterprise Java Beans as RESTful services. What JuxRS provides to you are annotations because all of the methods you want to expose on a RESTful service interface are just annotated. Annotated for the access path, like get, post, put, or delete. Um, a mapping to a URI, which then is the part of the URL that specifies if you want to access an employee object or if you want to access a department object. You can have query parameters uh, with it or path parameters with it. And this is what JuxRS provides. So let's have a look how the architecture looks like for the integration of RESTful services within Oracle, JDeveloper, and ADF. 
Well, if you watch the ADF TV recording about the integration of SOAP services, then this image you see here should look similar to you. Of course, technology-wise, there are differences. What you see is that we have three client options within ADF to deal with Westwood services. One of the options is the URL data control. And in 12C, this URL data control is replaced by a RESTful service data control to provide more functionality around the use with RESTful services. However, if you deal with 11G release 1 and more with 11G release 2, where we really beefed up the URL data control to work with the full put, post, get and delete cycle, then the URL data control is what you would use. The other options are to use ADF business components and the Pojo data control. And as you can see, the way that you access a RESTful service through the Pojo data control and through the uh, ADF business components model is through a client through a Pojo, which is the Jux RS proxy client. If you access a RESTful service through the proxy client, then we have another recommendation for you, which is just to put a wrapper up front. Keep in mind that RESTful services might change. So if the server-side implementation of the service changes, then this will have an impact to your client-side integration. If you put a wrapper up front that you then access from ADF business components or from the Pojo data control, then a change on the server-side might not impact your application. Because the data control that you work with, in the case of the Pojo data control, will be generated from the wrapper client. Another option is, and that's an advantage as for the SOAP service, instead of just going to the server all the time to query data, if there is data that you just want to show, for instance, a list of value, you might prefer to cache it. So using a wrapper up front allows you to cache the information that you already queried from a server. It's exactly the same picture with different clients than I showed you when I presented about the SOAP integration with Oracle IDF. So let's look at best practices. Well, best practice, of course, is upgrade to JDevelop over 12C if you can. Because here, the JuxRS client is there, so the libraries are there, the Jersey libraries are bundled. You get a lot of support declaratively for creating JuxRS services and for consuming JuxRS services. Remember that in 12C, we do have the RESTful data control. However, if you're not yet able to upgrade to 12C, then just download the Jersey library from the Jersey website and use the approach as shown on the architecture image on the previous slide. So this concludes this session about service integration uh, using RESTful services. There's a next one, which is about exposing ADF business components as a service, which also is quite of useful information from an architecture point of view because it allows you to share business logic and validation. So I suggest you continue there. Thank you.